amen, loose that donkey. You and I both know that a domestic donkey is a hooved mammal in the family uh, equidae, the same family as the horse. Uh, it derives then uh, from a wild donkey from Africa. And of course, we know that the donkey was domesticated sometime around five or 6,000 years ago. Most of us know that a donkey is a working animal, was and is and likely always will be. I wonder if you knew though that there are more than 40 million donkeys in the world, mostly in undeveloped or underdeveloped what we call third world countries where they are used principally as a draft or pack animals, uh, while working donkeys are often associated with those living at or below subsistence, uh, small numbers of donkeys are kept for breeding or even pets in more developed uh, country, countries. I, I could go on and on about the nomenclature of donkeys, how they are uh, uh, organized by breed and their history, but it is just one donkey that I want to draw your attention to uh, this morning. Uh, in the gospel, according to St. Mark, most of us mark this text. Uh, uh, it may be labeled in your Bible as Jesus's triumphant entry. Uh, this is then uh, the point at which Jesus Jesus' ministry, that is his purpose for being born, begins now to come to a culmination. It is then on this particular day that we begin to see Jesus fully unveiled, even though there were those who still didn't know who he was or why he had come. We see Jesus fully unveiling himself as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus then had been teaching uh, his disciples and others. Jesus had counseled a rich young ruler. Jesus had acknowledged even that he was going to die and be raised from the dead. Jesus had had then a, a debate between James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were trying to figure out which one of them was going to be the baddest brother on the block. Uh, that is, who was going to be considered the greatest. Jesus then uh, had healed blind Bartimaeus. Uh, by the time Jesus comes uh, into the place where he is at the Mount of Olives, uh, he recognizes uh, that his time is coming short, uh, that his purpose is about to be fulfilled. Jesus then, here in the text, we see him giving some instruction to his disciples. This seems like simple enough instruction. Amen. He tells them, two of them, to go into the village on the other side, and that as soon as they've entered into it, that they would find a donkey that would be tied up somewhere, and that the donkey is one on which nobody has ever seen. This is a young donkey waiting then uh, here tied up on the other on the other side of the village where they came from. Uh, Jesus gives very clear instruction uh, and simply says, untie it and bring it here. Uh, I dare you to loose, uh, uh, to text somebody and tell them, loose that donkey. Uh, ah, this morning, uh, here in the text, we see uh, Jesus giving instruction to his disciples uh, then and now uh, about the need uh, sometimes to loose uh, something that is valuable that may not look nearly as valuable uh, from the outset. Uh, stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Uh, Jesus recognizes the times in which these brothers are living. Uh, he understands that they're always going to be bystanders. Uh, uh, you know what bystanders are. Amen. Uh, those are the people standing by to see what they can see. Uh, uh, amen. To get a glimpse of what's happening, uh, what is about to happen. Uh, Jesus understands then uh, uh, the culture. He understands uh, where he's 
sending these two brothers. And he says to them in verse number three, if anybody asks you, what are you doing? Just say the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Jesus is getting ready now for the processional. Now, come on, y'all. Y'all remember what it was like when we were getting ready for the processional. Anybody remember on Sunday morning when we were in the brick and mortar building and it was almost time for the processional. We were making sure that we were ready for worship, right? We were making sure that we were ready to usher in the spirit of God. We were making sure that we were ready to lead God's people in worship. So we know a little bit of something about preparing for the processional. It's important to understand that while a donkey seems like a a relatively useless animal, one that we can easily ignore. It's not, after all, some gorgeous horse. It's not a stallion. It is not something that a military leader would dare mount and be seen on. Rather, it's something relatively unassuming. Jesus is getting ready for the processional, but he understands, Brother Vernon Eubanks, that the processional cannot proceed. This ceremonial movement of God's people could not take place until the donkey was there. I want somebody to know this morning that God is still calling, still instructing us to loose that donkey. He still has a particular need in order for everything to be in order. He tells them, uh, you should expect somebody to question you about what you are doing. I don't know who you are, child of God, uh, but I want you to know that when the Lord tells you to move, uh, you need to move. Amen. Uh, When God gives you instruction, uh, it doesn't matter how crazy it looks. Uh, It doesn't matter what anybody else is going to think about it. Uh, uh, But when God tells you to move, you ought to do what, beloved? Uh, Somebody type it in the chat. What do I do when the Lord Lord tells me to move, I ought to move. Amen. Here then these brothers, verse four says that the disciples left and they found this donkey standing in the street tied outside of a front door. Uh, Sure enough, as they were untying it, uh, you all know, uh, you know uh, exactly what happened. Uh, uh, As they were doing uh, what the Lord told them to do, uh, somebody else uh, had some questions. Uh, uh, Notice that their question was not, uh, how can I help you? Uh, uh, Their question was not, uh, may I untie the donkey for you? Uh, uh, The question was not, uh, uh, can I help you uh, uh, to get the donkey? donkey where the Lord, uh, where you needed to go. Uh, That's not how bystanding works. Uh, uh, Dr. Anita Stevenson uh, will tell you that bystanders uh, have nothing else to do, uh, that all a bystander is going to do is talk uh, and ask questions. Uh, A bystander uh, is not going to do uh, uh, any work. Uh, uh, It's important for us on this Palm Sunday, uh, as we look in this pericope, uh, to see here uh, that Mark, as the gospel writer, has done something uh, uh, that we seldom do. Uh, He has lifted up uh, uh, something unassuming, uh, uh, something that is typically uh, left unmentioned, uh, uh, something that is seen as peripheral to the gospel story. Uh, No, Mark here, uh, he takes the donkey uh, and he brings the donkey uh, uh, to the forefront. Uh, He makes it clear uh, uh, that even things uh, and people uh, who we tend to dismiss uh, uh, for Folk that we tend uh, to act like they have no value, a uh, folk that we tend to see uh, as not good enough, uh, that the Lord uh, tends to use those people. Uh, ah, the Lord tends uh, to loose that donkey. Uh, he tends to loose them, uh, not the highest, uh, not the best, uh, not the best looking, uh, not the richest, uh, not the most powerful. Uh, anybody testified this morning uh, that the Lord used 
me uh, and I wasn't the strongest. Uh, I wasn't the prettiest. Uh, I wasn't the richest. Uh, I wasn't the best educated, uh, but the Lord still used me. Uh, you ought to text somebody uh, and say, you better learn how to loose that donkey. Uh, here then uh, in the text, uh, uh, we see uh, Jesus uh, intentionally uh, using something uh, unexpected. Uh, Jesus intentionally uh, using something uh, undervalued. Uh, Jesus intentionally uh, using something uh, uh, not well talked about or, or highly esteemed. Why then, uh, Pastor A, this uh, on Palm Sunday, uh, why is the donkey uh, so important to be loosed? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question even as they are asked by the bystanders, why are you loosing that donkey? Ah, uh, bystanders, bystanders, questions and comments. Uh, that is their specialty, questions and comments. Very little work, if you notice, amen. Very little work from bystanders, but good questions and comments. They, as Jesus then anticipated, asked the question, and even the disciples then are able then to respond to say that the Lord has need of it. Ah, the truth of the matter is, beloved, this morning on this Palm Sunday, all over the place after two years of being in a virtual sanctuary, after two years of being in our homes, after two years of social distancing, uh, after two years uh, of being somewhat removed, uh, two years of being somewhat disconnected, uh, ah, we ought to be praying and asking the Lord uh, as we prepare now to move back into a different rhythm of life. Uh, uh, amen, somebody said we're going back to normal. Uh, uh, the truth of the matter is baby, this is our normal. Amen. Uh, there is no going back. But in order for us to proceed, uh, in order for us to move uh, into the places where God would have us to move uh, this morning, beloved, one of the things that we must do uh, is we must loose the donkey. Amen. Uh, Pastor, I'm not a donkey. Uh, don't you dare leave the virtual sanctuary saying, uh, Pastor Alice Walker Johnson called her members donkeys. Uh, she said the people at Clinton are donkeys. No, she didn't. Uh, ah, you have to understand understand, though, uh, what the donkey represents. Uh, amen. Uh, you have to understand uh, the purpose of a donkey, what a donkey is, uh, even in the gospel story. Uh, because if you understand uh, what a donkey is, uh, you'll understand then uh, why we need to loose then uh, the donkey, uh, why we would say uh, that we need to loose him uh, or her. Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm thankful here uh, that in scripture, Jesus chose a pack animal. Jesus chose intentionally a, a something that was of service. Three things that I'm going to be out of your way. I promise this morning, beloved, I, I promise you that I won't be before you long, but three things that I want you to notice, and I promise it'll help you to stand strong. The truth of the matter is, first and foremost, we know that all of Israel, the people of Israel were expecting a military king. Amen. We know that they were expecting the Messiah, the anointed one to come uh, with power, uh, to come to conquer Rome and to free them from what they perceived as Roman oppression, uh, to reposition them, to help them then to walk as God had promised as their special people. It's important for us to understand then uh, that Jesus uh, in choosing the donkey uh, uh, is making a statement. Uh, uh, he's making a comment or a commentary uh, about how people expected one thing, uh, but God does it a different way. Uh, anybody ever expected God to move one way in your life? Uh, and when you looked up, God had moved in a totally different way. Uh, anybody ever expected a blessing to come in a specific form and you discovered that you were blessed, but in a whole different way. It's important for us to understand then why the loosing of the donkey is so important. I have in me the ability to serve. I have in me the ability to sacrifice. I have in me the ability to suffer. 
why do I say I have it in me? I, I have it in me, Sister Joanne Jones, because I've been there and done that. Uh, anybody ever served? Uh, raise your hand if you've ever served. Uh, anybody uh, ever had to sacrifice anything? Uh, I know there's some folk on the platform uh, who know something uh, about sacrifice. And then I know that I know that I know that I know there's some saints in the virtual sanctuary who understand what it is to suffer some things. The truth of the matter is the choosing of the donkey then gives us the perfect image of one who is called, one whose purpose, one whose only design in life is to serve, one who is able then not only to be of practical service, but one who is able to carry a heavy burden. Uh, Y'all see where I'm going now, huh? Uh, uh, one who is able uh, to sacrifice uh, its own comfort uh, for a greater purpose. Uh, this morning, uh, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, loose the donkey. Uh, uh, yes, it's been two years. Uh, I've kind of been able to kick back God. Uh, I've been able because we couldn't be places, uh, uh, because there are certain things we couldn't do. Uh, God, God, I've been a little bit on coast. God, I've been a little bit on five speed. But now then the Lord is saying to the church, it's time for us to loose the donkey once again. It's time for us to release then those who are able to serve, those who are willing to serve, those who recognize that if I suffer with him, that I'm going to reign with him. Those who are not afraid or too selfish to sacrifice some things. How many of you know that it takes some sacrifice to serve the Lord? I've got to sacrifice every once in a while some of my time. Sometimes I've got to sacrifice some of my good sleep in order to meet him early in the morning in prayer. Sometimes I've got to sacrifice that extra handbag that I might be a blessing to somebody who maybe has no hands. Sometimes I've got to sacrifice that delicious meal and turn down my plate and fast and pray. Oh, as we enter Holy Week, I hear the Lord saying, loose that donkey. Yes, there are plenty who would be on parade, plenty who would march, plenty who would dress up, plenty who would show up for a good party. But here Jesus is reminding us as he's on his way to Jerusalem, ah, that he needs some folk who are willing to journey with him. Uh, not just uh, uh, in the good times, uh, because you and I know what was waiting for Jesus uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus then uh, picks the lowest of the low. Uh, he picks an animal. He picks something that nobody would think much of, uh, but he makes then this donkey uh, central to his entry in uh, to uh, Jerusalem. The truth of the matter is, beloved, uh, there is some things in us that we need the Lord to loose. Uh, there's some things in our lives uh, that we that have been tied up uh, too long. I don't know about you, but I feel that way. Uh, uh, there's some stuff, amen, uh, that too long has been sitting, uh, too long has been dormant, too long has been standing, uh, too long has been over in a corner. Uh, and God is speaking to us, even as Jesus spoke to his disciples, it's time to loose then some things into the kingdom of God. This morning, beloved, it's important for you as you study the word of God, as you see Jesus entering the holy city. Don't forget that even as he was placed on that donkey, ah, he and that donkey entered the holy city and they entered the holy city for three reasons. Jesus chose to come on an animal that was used to serving. He chose to come on an animal that was used to sacrificing its own comfort for the utility and the purpose for which it was being used. He chose something that was used to suffering the weight of what it was carrying. This morning, beloved, all over the virtual platform, I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ, as he entered into the holy city of Jerusalem, my Bible says that it was his triumphal entry. Amen. He was entering the holy city because he was on his way. Amen to the cross. He entered the holy city knowing that he was going to suffer. He entered the holy city knowing that he would sacrifice his whole life. He entered the holy city knowing 
that he had come to serve. I wonder this morning, when we think about the next time we get to process in uh, to a brick and mortar church, the next time we get to come in uh, to the house of God, even as we come into the virtual sanctuary on Sunday morning, do we come with a sense that we are coming to serve or to be served? Do we come with a sense that we are sacrificing ourselves or do we come trying to multitask, believing that God is just one more thing that we have to do and that we can do it all at once? Uh, do we come then uh, believing that if we suffer with Christ, that is, if we let go of some things that are not like him or from him or for him, that we will indeed reign with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have we been loosed? to serve God? Have we been loose to give and to sacrifice? Have we been loose yet to suffer then some things that for some might be uncomfortable and even unfair? This morning, as I encountered this donkey and the story, uh, it became clearer and clearer to me that God is trying to loose his people in this season, that we have in some ways been tied up we have in some ways been locked down and locked in and God is calling even right now for the loosing of his people. But God isn't loosing us ah, just for a parade. Look in the text, beloved. The Bible says they told them what Jesus had said, verse six, and they allowed them to take it, meaning the donkey, and then they bought the coat to Jesus and they threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Uh, uh, many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Uh, then those who went ahead uh, who were and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David Hosanna in the highest. I wonder this morning if we've been loosed, amen, to join the procession. That is not the processional. It's not the choir and the ministers. It's not the acolyte. It's not any of that, the ushers. But rather, I wonder if we've been loosed to join the procession of saints who are moving about in their own places, shouting Hosanna. I wonder if anybody has has been loose this morning to worship the true and living God? Has anybody been loose to lift up holy hands? Has anybody been loose to open their mouth and declare Hosanna in the highest? Has anybody been loose to say praise God from whom all blessings flow? Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Has anybody been loose to tell their story that I once was blind, but now I see? Has any Anybody been loose to dance before the Lord? Has anybody been loose to declare that our God reigns? Has anybody been loose this morning to declare to the world that while you see this me now, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me? Has anybody been loose then to testify to the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Has anybody been loose this morning to declare to the unsaved that he is still uh, available uh, for the uttermost to the guttermost. Anybody uh, been loose to say, uh, I, I'm singing a, a new song unto the Lord? Uh, has anybody been loose to say, uh, I'm still dancing? Uh, I just have a new partner. Uh, has anybody been loose to say uh, uh, that I was sick in my body uh, and now I'm well? Uh, uh, not because uh, of anything I did, uh, uh, but because I met a doctor named Jesus. Uh, has anybody been loose this this morning ah, to be of service in the kingdom of God, because the truth of the matter is beloved. Even as Jesus entered the holy city, he desires to enter our lives. He desires to enter our communities, our homes. He desires to enter our jobs and our churches. But who then will make the way for Jesus? The truth of the matter is, Jesus certainly could have found a beautiful horse uh, on which to mount. He certainly could have found robes that would declare his glory. But Jesus, I believe, understood ah, that people had 
the wrong idea about him, that he needed to make it clear that he was coming, ah, not in power and glory, but he was coming in humility and service. I wonder this morning, how do we come? Ah, how do we come? How do we come? Are we coming then in humility with a desire to serve and not be served? Are we willing to allow the Lord to use us? It's instructive that this donkey had never been ridden before. Anybody who knows anything about horses or pack animals, you know that oftentimes before they can be used, they have to be broken in. I don't know about you this morning, but this story struck me in a powerful way as the donkey was loose to serve, uh, as Jesus mounted this donkey. This donkey was also broken in for service. I'm wondering this morning if it's your prayer. I've been asking the Lord, hmm, God, I want you to use me. God, I want to serve you. God, I need you in some places in my life to break me uh, so that, God, I can be used by you. This morning, then, as we ask the Lord to loose the donkey, all of us, amen, have the ability to be served. I don't want anybody to think uh, that I'm too young, I'm too old, uh, I'm too good, I'm not good enough. Uh, I've been out in the world too long. Uh, I've been saved too long. None of us ought to think, amen, that we're too anything to be served by God but rather our hearts have to be turned to a place where we're asking the Lord to loose us, to loose us from the things that keep us from serving him, to loose us from the things that make us think that we can't suffer anything, to loose us from complaining every time something goes wrong in our lives. That rather than see that God is trying to get glory, we're so busy complaining and asking why us and how unfair it is. God it wants to loose us this morning from some things that even as he sent the two disciples ah, to loose that donkey, he sent the Holy Spirit. Ah, he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to loose you and I from our sin, to loose us from our shame, to loose us from everything that would hinder and bind us. And I wonder this morning, uh, if anybody is praying, Lord, loose me, never mind the donkey, amen. Uh, uh, Jesus told his disciples and they were able to tell the bystanders, uh, it's okay, uh, the Lord has need of it, uh, but the Lord will send it back. Uh, I want somebody to know this morning, uh, the Lord has need of you in this season. Uh, uh, as we come out of lockdown, uh, as we come out of being tied up, uh, as we come out of uh, being isolated, uh, you you need to hear this morning that the Lord has need, not just of me as the pastor, but the Lord has need of you, 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 and you. In other words, the Lord wants to loose you for some greater purpose. Here then, this pitiful little donkey, this tiny little pack animal had never been ridden before, was tied up somewhere and maybe forgotten. I want you to know, child of God, no matter how insignificant you may May feel, uh, no matter how pushed aside you may feel, no matter how unuseful you may feel, the Lord has need of you. I pray this morning uh, that the Holy Ghost will loose you, uh, will loose you from thinking uh, that you don't have anything to offer, uh, will loose you from thinking uh, that you don't have the time, will loose you from thinking you're too old, uh, will loose you from thinking you're too young will loose you from thinking uh, you're too good. Uh, will loose you from thinking uh, you're not good enough. Uh, I pray in this season uh, that you will understand uh, that God needs you uh, for kingdom work. Uh, God needs you uh, for kingdom building. Uh, God needs you then uh, to tell somebody uh, that Jesus still saves. Uh, God needs you uh, to share your testimony. Uh, God needs you uh, to move. Uh, this morning, uh, I 
stop by to tell somebody uh, that Jesus uh, uh, is still looking for folk, uh, not just folk uh, uh, who are willing to show up at the parade. Ah, there were plenty of people, Brother Joe Smith, uh, lining the streets at the parade. Uh, there were plenty of people there to see uh, uh, what they could see. Uh, the problem isn't uh, uh, with the parade goers. Uh, the problem is uh, uh, with those uh, who are willing to work when the parade is over, uh, as Jesus was coming into the city. Uh, folk were crying out, Hosanna, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, see, sometimes uh, when the crowd is worshiping, uh, uh, it's easy for me. Uh, when the crowd is worshiping, uh, it's easy for me to give them glory. Uh, when the crowd is all into it, uh, when the music is amped up, uh, when the praise team is singing right, uh, uh, when the musicians have it going, uh, I can get my praise on. Uh, that's the parade. Uh, but Jesus needs some people uh, who are willing to be uh, uh, not just in the parade, uh, but willing to be in the process uh, of being loosed. Uh, there is, uh, ah, the same word for processional uh, begins with process. Uh, before I uh, show up to worship, uh, uh, before I jump in the choir, uh, uh, before I march with the ushers, uh, before I preach, uh, uh, before I sing, uh, before I do anything, uh, I have to submit myself uh, to a process. Uh, this morning, the Lord is calling us in in, uh, to the process of being loosed, uh, whatever it is this morning uh, that hinders you uh, from serving the Lord. Ah, uh, uh, this morning, I dare you to pray, Lord, loose me. Uh, God, untie me. Uh, God, untangle me. Uh, God, I want to serve you this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm thanking God this morning uh, for a loose donkey. Uh, I'm thanking God this morning uh, for the reminder that the Lord has need, uh, not just of a donkey, uh, but he has need of you. He has need of me, not on our terms, but on his. He has need of some folk who are willing uh, to sacrifice some things. He has need of some folk who understand uh, that for the cause of Christ, you're going to suffer some things. He has need of some folk who are willing, uh, whether or not uh, somebody thanks you, uh, whether or not somebody calls your name, uh, whether or not you have a position or a title. God is looking for some people who will serve the true and living God. He said then, loose the donkey because the Lord has need of it. This morning, beloved, God has need of you and me. He has need in the kingdom for folk who are kingdom-minded and kingdom servants. He has need for folk who are willing, not just to be in the parade as a spectator, not to be the bystanders who chit chat and give commentary and ask questions, but rather the people who are willing in obedience to do as the Lord has instructed, no matter what it looks like. This morning, beloved, I pray that you'll recognize that here in the midst of what seems like a minor part, this donkey ends up playing a major role because this donkey then becomes the mode by which the Lord Jesus Christ enters the holy city. I wonder, is my life such that the Lord can enter somebody else's life, somebody else's environment, somebody else's church, somebody else's club meeting, somebody else's choir rehearsal? Does the Lord enter other places because I'm there? Jesus used, ah, that's a hard question, amen. This thing, amen, this particular word challenged me because it's like, Lord, have mercy. I then need to be in a place where the Lord can use me. Doesn't matter how insignificant the role seems. Sometimes I keep waiting for the big opportunity, amen? The big stage, the big parade, the big party, the big crowd. And yet the truth is sometimes God has an insignificant role for me to play. It may seem insignificant to me, but it's a major role in what he's trying to do in the lives of others. God used what was humble. God used what was willing to be broken 
God used what could carry some weight ah, to allow his son to enter the holy city. This morning, I wonder, can God use you because you've been broken? Can God use you because you're mature enough in your faith to carry some heavy stuff? Can God use you because you're obedient and you will do as he's called you to do? I don't know about you, but on this Palm Sunday, ah, I want to be more than at the parade. I want to do more than wave a palm. I want to do more than along with the crowd, shout Hosanna in the highest. This Palm Sunday, I want to be used by God. And so I'm asking the Lord to loose me in all the places that I'm bound, all the places that I've been tied up, tangled up, separated, isolated pulled apart, I'm asking the Lord to untie me, to give me the courage then to let him use me, to carry the weight of his glory. I don't know about you, but that donkey, huh, who some would have thought was a little bit of nothing, is a part of the gospel record. That donkey, amen, will forever be associated with the triumphant entry of Jesus into the holy city. That donkey, amen, no matter what any other donkey might think about that donkey, that donkey had the testimony that the Lord had used him. I wonder when I come to the end of my life's procession, when I prepare to enter the holy city, will I have the testimony, the Lord Jesus used me. This morning, beloved, Somebody put it in the chat and said, untie me, Father. That's my prayer, that the Lord himself would loose me, even as they loosed a donkey, but even as God loosed his son. The truth of the matter is that Jesus was loosed, that he might die a sinner's death. He was set free in order to suffer on the cross. He was set free of his divinity. He was let go, had to let go of his holiness and all that he was as the son of God, loosed from it all just for you and just for me. Surely Jesus understood the plight of that pack animal. But when Jesus went to Calvary, he went to save a wretch like you and me. The truth of the matter is Jesus could have called 10,000 angels just to be right by his side. He could have cried out, amen, Father, loose me from this cross. But I don't know about you, I'm so thankful then that when Jesus went to Calvary, he went to Calvary loosed fully to be fully obedient to God, loose fully to fulfill his purpose for you and for me, loose fully to suffer, loose fully to sacrifice, loose fully to serve. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful this morning that Jesus himself was loose to serve, that he was loosed to give his very life for you and me, loosed from his divinity that you and I might now know the joy of a relationship with the true and living God. I don't know about you, but I'm praying this morning, Lord, untie me so you can use me. In the name of the Father who loves us, his son Jesus who saves us, the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Every head